What's going on, everybody? This is Elder Jacoby Owens coming to you October 14th for a quick word on Wednesday. Now, we're going to jump around to a couple of scriptures today because um, what I want to go over is something that I went over a few years ago. Um, it's a supposed uh, Bible contradiction. So I just want to go over that uh, very briefly, read a few scriptures, and just uh, talk about it, drop a nugget or two. This isn't a full, complete Bible study. This is just uh, something to get you motivated. Maybe have a Bible study of your own, ask the right questions, or things of that nature. All right. First scripture we're going to be coming from is Acts chapter 9, and we're going to go verses 3 through 8. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why, per why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise. And go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Uh, and from there, we're going to jump over to Acts chapter 22, where Paul is recounting this experience that he had on the road to Damascus. All right, that's Acts 22. Uh, we're going to verses 6 through 11. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell onto the, unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake unto me. I'm sorry. Not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus. And there it is, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. All right. And so, I'll turn to my other scriptures very briefly, so I have them. So basically. Um, I saw something where a few people got caught up on those two verses, right? Because in one verse it's saying that, look, the people heard the voice. The people that were with Paul heard the voice. And then in a couple chapters later, Paul's recounting the situation. He's like, look, they didn't even hear the voice of him that spake to me. You know what I mean? And, and if uh, some people looking for an axe to grind with God or an axe to grind against the holy word of God, We'll use a scripture like this to um, try to say, oh, see, this is why I don't believe in the Bible. Oh, see, this is why the Bible is man-made. They can't even get the story straight. But I don't see a contradiction here at all. And here's why. When, here's why, I'll just go straight to Matthew 13. How about that? Because in Matthew 13, verses 13 and 14, Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. A lot of times when there are these uh, issues with the Word of God, where people don't understand, or they think something's uh, wrong, or something's fishy with the Word of God, a lot of times it can be answered with other passages in the Word of God. That's why I cut myself short because I was about to go ahead and elaborate on some things. But if you jump right back over to Matthew 13, verses 13 and 14, you know, it explains Acts 9 
in Acts 22, these verses that we covered. Because Jesus said, hearing, they hear not. So yes, they heard the voice, but at the same time, they didn't hear the voice. You know what I mean? Because if they heard and understood, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about an understanding. Because if they would have understood the voice and, and, and that uh, what was said took root in their spirit, in their soul, they'd have still been running with Paul. But you don't hear about these travelers with Paul anymore. They took him to the city, dropped him off, and they got out of there. You know, they're, they're removed from his, removed from the story. They're removed from the uh, the experience. Yeah, they heard the voice. They were afraid, yet and still, what they heard wasn't enough to allow them to truly hear and understand what God was saying unto them, unto Paul. You know what I mean? And if that was a message for Paul, these people that were with Paul should have uh, should have jumped onto it and held onto it as well because they were apparently going to be consenting with Paul and whatever it is that Paul was going to do. You know what I mean? And I'll read that one more time. Therefore speak I to them in parables because they seeing see not it. You have eyes, you see, but you, you don't see at the same time. You don't understand. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Again, hearing, you have ears to hear, but you don't understand what it is that's being said to you. So you might as well not even have heard at all. All right. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. Because lastly, in Romans 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, we have to understand what it is that we believe in. And that's through the word of God. You know, we can hear something all day, but if we don't have the understanding, we might may as well have never even heard what was put before us. All right. <clears throat> but that's all I wanted to share today. Prayerfully, the scriptures have been a blessing to you as they have been to me. You know what I mean? Just to, another um, another reason to stand firm and trust in the word of God, even though we may run across the scripture here and there where we don't necessarily understand at the moment. You know, if we continue to pray, we continue to seek God, we continue to read his word. You know, God is faithful to help us to understand. He's faithful to um, enlighten us. You know, but we have to trust them, you know, because we can run across these two verses in Acts and uh, not even be thinking about Matthew 13, 13 and 14. And you could come to a, a, a pause like, hmm, that's very interesting. What do I do with this information now? Do I see this and be like, oh, I'm going to close my Bible and, uh, and I'm just going to be done with this whole faith walk because I, I don't understand this one scripture I've come across. Or you're going to say, Lord, if you have that relationship with him, Lord. I have a relationship with you. I trust you and I believe you are who you say you are. But Lord, help me with this 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 issue that I'm having because I don't see the correlation of these two scriptures working together. You know what I mean? He's faithful to hear us and he's faithful to allow us to understand. But we have to trust him even when we don't understand or see what it is um, that he's doing in our lives. We have to trust him. But all right, remember, Monday is the Monday prayer. Tuesday is testimony Tuesday. You have a prayer request or testimony, feel free to leave a comment below or shoot me an email at jacodio at gmail.com and we will pray together and I will share your testimony, okay? Until next time, be blessed.